I see some more people checked in on the chat, and so I want to give a warm good morning to Janice H., Sam, Janice and Bob, Martha Harrison, Jacqueline, Bree, John, uh, Reverend John, uh, Aunt Diane, Auntie Sandy, Aunt Mabel, and Anitris, good morning. Thank you all for joining us today as we journey into this topic of listening to your soul intelligently. Mid-pandemic, trying to decide to send kids back to school or keep them home, to visit family for the holidays or not, trying to rally up voter turnout from a computer, hoping to make the right decisions and be cautious as we move forward, trying to listen deeply. I read a quote with no author that said, never have I dealt with anything more difficult than my own soul. So, listening to your soul intelligently, what is it? How do we do it? Well, we need to start at zero and build our foundation up to level five, which is where listening to your soul intelligently lives. Here is our outline. Level zero is exposure. Level one is ancestors. Level two is tradition. Level three is your gut. Level four is tuning in. And level five is listening to your soul intelligently. So we start at level zero, exposure, which I will explain using Saad Guru's words. He says, whatever you make out of the mind is of no true significance. As a device, yes. But in the ultimate sense, it does not mean anything because it may take one shape today and another shape tomorrow. The mind is fluid. You can make anything out of it. How it is shaped simply depends on how it is influenced. If you look deeply, what you call your mind is something you have borrowed from thousands of people around you. You have accumulated this mind in bits and pieces. Your mind is just your background. Depending on what kind of family you come from, your education, your religion, the country or society you belong to and the world you are living in. What you call as myself, that person or that personality is just a bundle of conclusions that have made, you have made about life. The intellect is just a survival tool, a limited aspect of your life. Survival is essential but not fulfilling. If you want to go into deeper dimensions of life, first you need the necessary instruments. Right now, you're experiencing life with just the sensing organs by seeing and hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling. With these, you cannot know anything beyond the physical. You cannot measure the depths of the ocean with a foot scale. That is what is happening with people right now. They are approaching the deeper dimensions of life without the necessary instruments. So they jump to the wrong conclusions. Okay, so level zero is your exposure. Who have you been exposed to? What have you been exposed to? How has your exposure impacted you for the better or the worse? In essence, how has your exposure shaped you? Once you have a clear vision of this, we move to level one, ancestors. Your ancestral history will tell you things that, I'm sorry, your ancestral history will tell you a story that exposure can't. Although they will work together, they are very different. At the ancestor level, you are trying to learn where you come from, who you come from, and what things you share in common with those who came before you. They used to say when I was growing up, there is nothing new under the sun. That may be true, but you're new. And if you don't look to elders and those who came before you for insight, then the same old same will be new to you too. Tell me about your ancestors and I will tell you about yourself. Did your parents vote? Did their parents vote? Were they even able to vote? And how does this history, your history, 
parallel with your power to vote today. This is such a hard concept to sell right now. In a world where people rather get advice from followers on social media than to sit down and hear stories from their grandparents or elders or anybody who know about something that you don't know about. Just to be humble, to, prepare, to prefer it be done right the first time instead of on the fifth time. Okay, let me hurry up and get to level two before that poor horse gets beaten again. Okay, level zero exposure. Level one is ancestors. Now level two, tradition. Do you know how many people are doing things traditionally and have no idea what tradition they are upholding? Like, absolutely no clue. Don't believe me? Here are some common traditions specific to Americans. Class reunions, handshakes, no white after Labor Day, God bless you after sneezing, and pantyhose. I can't explain them all, but I will tell you this tidbit. If you're a woman married to pantyhose, know that they were invented for men to ride horses. And if you're a person who thinks you're being polite by saying God bless you after someone sneezes, know that Pope Gregory created that during the plague because coughing was simply a symptom of the plague. Meanwhile, people are practicing traditions like these every day and not stopping to know why they're doing it. You have to know why. After today, it can no longer be okay for you to just do what you have always done. You must be intentional in order to get to level five. Okay, now we move to level three, your gut. I would say this is probably the hardest level to develop. But once it's developed, everything that comes after is easy. See, when I was in college at the best HBCU in the world, no, wait, it's the best university, period, Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, or FAMU as we like to call it, I would sometimes get a phone call from my mom in the middle of the night. It would go something like this. Ring, ring, ring. Hello? Shay. Yeah? You okay? Yeah, mom, what's wrong? Where you at? I'm at home. What are you, what, I'm asleep. What's wrong? Oh, okay. All right, well, go back to sleep. I, I had one of those dreams again. Ironically, my boyfriend at the time would get a very similar phone call from his dad. Not on the same day or anything, but here and there. Both my mother and my father-in-law had these specific dreams that alerted them almost like it was putting them on notice. For what? We never knew. It was always the same dream and it never foreshadowed anything specific. Yet because they had experience with this dream so often throughout their lives, they knew when they had this specific dream, they needed to be alert and aware and they made sure their children were as well. Now, if you've never had something like this happen to you, then you may be confused and wondering, how does this work? It's actually really simple. I call it discernment. It's a gut feeling. Like, imagine the Trade Center employee who called out of work on 9-11. It's an instinct. Some people are aware of it more than others, but it happens. Listening deeply is not always done with your ears. And it does not always mean you will discover something new or bad or surprising. It simply puts you on alert to things your eyes and ears may not be able to perceive as well. Almost like a service animal would alert you to a threat that you don't have the senses to perceive. A good gut can do the same. And like I said, it does not always mean something will happen. But when something is about to happen, you are tuned in and better prepared to react. Now we move to level four, which is really just the continuation of level three. It's tuning in. My husband is the luckiest man on earth. Not because he's with me. Well, I mean, that's one reason, but he is literally lucky. He can predict a score on a football game. He can roll the dice on a crap table and hit. 
He can walk down the street and a hundred dollar bill will stick under his shoe. He is lucky. And for the longest time, I could never figure it out. But as I have dug deeper into myself and as I have grown and become more spiritually in tune in a different realm, I realize it's not really luck at all. He has impeccable discernment. He uses it to be more lucky. But it's really that he's tuned into his gut. And so when he gets this feeling to bet or roll the dice and it works in his favor, it's not as random as it seems at all. It's a very distinct thing that is happening. Some people will call it favor or a woman's intuition. But no matter the term you use to define it, when it happens to you, when your instincts are pulling you one way or the other, be it a relationship, a job, a friendship, a choice, pay it attention. It is telling you something. But if you don't tune in, you may miss it. Be careful not to confuse desires of the heart with your gut. Heck, don't confuse desires with your mind with your instincts either. These are two entirely different things, but that's why it's so important to take time to develop your gut and learn to be tuned in. Last but certainly, certainly not least, we move to level five, listening to your soul intelligently. Everyone's soul is saying something. If you don't know what yours is saying, that's okay. It's not okay to continue not to know what it's saying though. As you spend time working on your soul, it will become more mature. But you must feed it. Just like the food you consume has a direct effect on how your body performs, what you feed your soul correlates in the same way. The work of the soul is infinite. You will never master your soul because the soul is constantly evolving. But you, can't, you can be tuned in. You can be listening deeply, analyzing what is presented and intelligently deciding on how to move forward. Nothing, no priority you have is more important than the work of your soul. Just like on the plane, how you need to secure your oxygen mask first before anyone else's. Yep, you need to secure that soul too. Imam Ali says, your sickness is from you but you do not perceive it, and your remedy is within you, but you do not sense it. You presume you are a small entity, but within you is enfolded the entire universe. You are indeed the evident book by whose alphabets the hidden becomes manifest. Therefore, you have no need to look beyond yourself. What you seek is within you, if only you reflect. Take time for your soul. Listen deeply and intentionally to all of your senses. Tap into your third eye. Seek wisdom from wise counsel. Reflect. Take all these things into account and then use them to make intelligent decisions. This is the work of listening to your soul intelligently. COVID-19 has sparked a sort of soul searching I have never seen before. People are making changes from the inside out, be it health, fitness, food. I have seen more people lose weight with gyms closed. We have made it through this amazingly impossible year together with shared goals, apart maybe in distance, but never at heart. Spirituality has become more prevalent now than ever before. As you continue this lifelong soul journey, some questions from Deepak Chopra you can use to help you center your soul along the way are as follows. Who am I? What do I want? What am I grateful for? And what is my dharma or purpose in life? Check in with yourself. 
be it weekly, monthly, write it on your calendar. Couple it with another task you do every week or every month. Share it with a friend, keep each other accountable. Quietly and quite often, listen to your soul intelligently. Peace and blessings.